Thank you for joining the Complex PCI 2021 meeting. It's, uh, my name is DW Park. And so we're going to start the main arena session. The session title is the Featuring Training Session and Clinical Workshop number four and the Troubleshooting. So in this session, we will in depth discuss and uh, some the uh, complication during the com complex PCI. So I'm gonna introduce the core moderator and uh, uh, intervention is uh, well worldwide famous intervention is the Satoru Ochichi from Japan. So we also invited the worldwide famous uh, panelists from world and the Jung Sun Kim from Korea yeah. and uh, Dr. Yoshito Yamamoto and uh, Dr. William Konto Ho and uh, Dr. Uh, Ramanesh Singh, Arjam Singh, Dr. Uh, Jack Wei Chi Tan, uh, Dr. Mao Xin Ring, and uh, Dr. Kwan Nok Nung. Okay, and uh, Dr. Chi Chi, can you uh, start this session? Okay, thank you very much. Good evening or good afternoon, some countries. And, uh, I would like to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Do Yung Ka from Asa Medical Center. His topic is the device stuck on the during the procedure. So Dr. Khan, please. I'm Dr. Do Yung Kang from Asa Medical Center. And today I will talk about the action plan for the device stuck during PCI. I have nothing to disclose. Let's begin with the case. 76 year old female with angina and diagnosed two vessel disease with a very tight distal circumflex disease and calcified Fox LA disease. Circumflex was treated with a 2.75 stent. And we checked the IVUS for the Fox LAD, and there was very severe calcification at the LAD. We performed the NC balloon and you can see the, the indentation and it does not open. So we used the 3.0 curling balloon and at 10 atmosphere, it was trapped. We uh, performed all the, uh, all the techniques or we tried to wiring and, but it could not pass the region and pull back and it did not work. So finally, the patient went bad and undergo the cabbage. So the patient survived with the cabbage at LAD, but even in the surgical field, the surgeon could not retrieve the balloon. So he cut the balloon because it did not move. The device in treatment during PCI, the instance is low. But at this, uh, like this case, sometimes it can be a disaster to the patient and the operator. Any device can be trapped. Wire, micro cutter, balloon stand, and rotabulation bar, and imaging cutter. And today I will focus on the rotabulator bar and imaging cutter. Another case with a female 64 year old with angina and previous LAD stenting of the prox LAD. And the circumflex proximal region progressed with a severe calcification. We tried to perform the rota, but it was trapped. It's a very dangerous situation. We performed the, uh, to rescue the ballooning LAD or, or rewiring the circumflex and ballooning with a two, three NC balloon, but it did not work. And she underwent cabbage, emergency cabbage. This is the situation that we push the rotabulation bar at the proximal circumflex, but because there was some force into the LAD and the rota was stuck with the wire, the kinking. This is another case, 64 year old male in China, previous LAD multiple PCI. And you can see the prox LAD stenosis. And in IVUS, there was severe calcified region with underexpanded stent. 
we applied 3.0 and 3.5 NC balloon up to very high pressure, but there was still indentation. It does not expand. We used the 1.5 millimeter bar and it did not pass. And a wrong selection, 1.75 bar was applied and it was stuck at the, on the expanded stent. As you can see, there is a diamond bar at the front side, but there was no the diamond bar at the back side and it was trapped at this side. And we, if we pull it gently, slowly, then there, there is some weak portion and it stretches. So I push it in the guide catheter as much as possible and then pull in the wire and push it at one time with very strong force. You can see the moment of escape. Yeah. The rotabulation entrainment, when it happens, or usually it happens with the pushing the ball forcefully during ablation, especially at the angulated vessels or branches. And if it trapped, you can see, you can hear the noise sound and take your foot off the pedal as soon as possible. And do not put it gently or slowly because it stretches. And one thing we can do is to put in the second guide wire and borrowing to modify the anatomy. And my tip is to put it hard at once on the strong backup using the guiding cutter infection as the previous case or using the guide extension cutter to make the maximum force without stretching the weak portion. Another case with the imaging catheter, the 62 year male or the angina and left main bifurcation region and treated with the conventional crushing and performed the 3.5 NC balloon final kissing balloon. But when we checked the IVUS, it was trapped at the circumflex stent. What happened? You can see that the shortening of the stent with the IVUS catheter in treatment because I pulled it out. Why does it happen? You can see this is the visualization of the situation. The stent strut and the hole at the IVUS tip is kinked. If there is some hole in the IVUS and the strut tip is interacted and then make the entrainment like this situation. So it usually happens at the distal tip of the IVUS or some under expanded or mal opposed portion of the stent. It happens because of distal stent in complete position especially at the side branch portion or calcified region with underexpanded or mal opposed the strut. And if there is some angle between IVUS catheter and tip and catheter tip, I was in the, especially in the tortuous vessel or at the very distal vessel, there is some difference between angle at the tip and the force at the wire, then the kinking happens. How to overcome? Do not pull back because it stretches and the anatomy of the, the kinked stent is damaged. And the push the imaging transducer to the tip to make a good force. And then push the catheter in to make some, the, to, to escape from this situation. Like this. If you pull it and we, you cannot escape. You push it and then you can escape. In this patient, we could uh, escape with uh, pushing the cutter in and then perform the additional kissing balloon and the final result was good. Another technique is to, to implant the second guide wire and ballooning to modify the anatomy. This is another case. 71 year old male patient, angina, and very diffuse LA disease. We implanted the LA stent and checked the IVUS, then it stuck at the, the 
the stent strut. And because I or we already pulled it out, and you can see the damaged strut, and I inserted the another wire, then performed one, two, and 2.5 NC balloon to modify the anatomy and could escape from this situation. So this is conclusion. The device entrainment and loss occurs during complex PCI. Always take calm and keep vital sign of the patient and call for help. And the important thing is to think about the mechanism of entrainment then overcome. Choice of appropriate strategy is more important than technique. And prevention is always better. Gentle manipulation during your procedure can prevent those disasters. Thank you for your attention. So uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, second speaker, Dr. Kemis, uh, from the Germany. Uh, his topic is the perforation. Kemis. Hello, here is Kams Marshegi from the University Heart Center Freiburg, Bad Krotzingen. Well, the topic is action plan perforation. Those are my disclosures. Well, this is what you don't want to see, right? It's after CTO PCI, retrograde procedure, everything is good. You do a post dilatation, you give a final shot, and then you see the huge perforation. So, what does it mean actually in terms of mortality? Well, the 30 day mortality in this collective was quite higher in patients with perforation, going up to 15.5%, and an incidence of 0.34% over all PCIs in the British Cardiovascular Intervention Society database. When we think about perforation, we're dividing the perforation into small vessel perforation, vessel ruptures. Well, this is what's called a small vessel perforation, right? Here, uh, what happened was that the balloon was pushed over the wire. So once you see this and you occlude the vessel, and uh, then in the second image, as you can see here, the perforation almost healed uh, conservatively. What you should not do is what I did here, an additional uh, injection, because hydraulic force can lead to another rupture of the, perf uh, of the um, damaged vessel. So therefore, never inject too much once you have already perforation. So therefore, uh, in this case, you have to coil from both sides, from the diagonal and from the um, LED because it was a CTO. Uh, here, we didn't need a pericardial synthesis. So during CTO-PCI, the perforations occurring about 5.5% in a European collective of over 1,800 CTO-PCIs. The half of them was based on retrograde approach, half of them based on CTO vessel ruptures. When you see that uh, there's 5.5% of uh, perforations, the total tamponade rate was 0.9%. So 20% of the perforations lead to tamponade and 5% of them to death, which means in total five deaths based on perforation of 1,800 patients. And interestingly, the perforation leads to death uh, in, three, in three cases based on the CTO vessel side. So plaque perforation uh, modification, things like that and only one based on the epicardial side, and one was unknown in this collective. So the US uh, group about the open CTO uh, did the same investigation and check intervention, and here 1,000 patients were uh, retrospectively analyzed, and the perforation rate was a little bit higher with 8.9%. In total, the tamponade rate was 1.1%. 1 1, 1 so 1% of those patients had a tamponade, and 20% of those 1% had a death. So this is what you have to deal with. So perforations are serious event, even in CTO PCI. Uh, here, the collective of post cabbage is much higher. And why is this a, quite a big problem? As post cabbage patients, they, they have a dry tamponade. Epicardial perforation leads to a dry tamponade in most of the cases, compressing the right ventricle, right atrium or left atrium. And this, you cannot treat interventionally anymore. So therefore, you need a surgical approach. And this was done after surgery. You can see the right wall was again okay. So this patient could survive. 
So whenever you see a perforation, a small vessel perforation or distal perforation in a post cabbage patient, you should use coils and microcatheters and, uh, and, and uh, just fix the problem with coils. So there are Axiom and Concertino coils, for example, from EV3, I use them uh, um, and uh, you can use it in fine cross carval, cross and turnpike, but there are multiple other coils as well, which are 1.8 French compatible. So these are zero, zero, uh, zero, uh, 14 inch compatible coils. Whenever you need bigger coils, you can even use Prograde 2.5 French, and you can go up to five millimeter, or even bigger coils with the figure 818 Vortex or Astro coils. Another alternative is thrombin. Thrombin is very effective. Uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 cc uh, is almost enough to uh, just uh, uh, put it additional to the coils uh, to uh, seal the perforation. So now about the vessel rupture. Here you see a case, CTO case, an osteal RCA CTO. The wire uh, was very calcified, so I had the puncture. Finally, I passed through, but uncrossable. So the uh, rotor wire was, uh, was used, the rotor ablation was done, and 1.75 burr got entrapped. So I tried to bring the burr out with uh, the snare. It didn't, uh, it didn't work. The shaft was also broken, so I tried to prepare uh, with a balloon dilatation before pulling out uh, the rotor wire with the burr. This was successful, as you can see, I, ch I, I, I gently pulled out the wire and, while uh, and then I could bring the burr into the catheter. So finally, this is what you can see here, the, the snare, the burr, and the um, yeah, disconnected burr from the, uh, from the shaft. So after giving contrast, I saw a huge LS3 perforation. So this is a CTO with a huge LS3 perforation. I tried to knuckle down the supintima space, but finally the knuckle went out in the pericardium space all the time. So therefore I deflated the balloon, but still, as you can see, uh, there was a huge bleeding going on. So I used the retrograde, I said a retrograde bailout option could be an option. And this is what I did, septal wiring here. And finally, the septal uh, wire was uh, able to just go through, uh, the seal black was just able to go through these very complex collateral connections. But what I have to do, do immediately was also to uh, do a pericardial synthesis based on tamponade. Finally, I could go retrograde, I knuckled out uh, the wire. The idea was to, uh, yeah, to, to have a, a subintimal space to uh, do an intimal media pla uh, shift towards the perforation. You see the balloon is going from the ostium of the RCA out in the pericardium. And um, then finally I could externalize and could stand the vessel, but still a cover play uh, stand was necessary. post was performed. Finally, the primary result was very good. We could retrieve the drain. And the lady could be, uh, could be discharged two days later. So, um, Another big problem are this uh, a very eccentric uh, uh, stenosis, right? So eccentric calcification. And here you see huge left main, 6.3 uh, versus 6.9 millimeter. So, um, well, I was thinking about cutting balloon angioplasty to somehow get the, um, the, the plaque modified. And then a 5.0 drug looting stand was placed. Uh, the stand was deployed very nicely. And uh, well, I did a post-dilatation with 6.0 NC balloon. Everything was perfect. But finally, what you can see was a huge perforation. So here you have to be really, really fast. This is live treating. So uh, immediately, uh, two minutes later, a cover stand papyrus, which was in, in the room, was placed 5.0 uh, 50 millimeters. And um, as you can see here, the perforation was sealed, but still bleeding was going on. The patient lost two liter of blood and we had to open the chest with the heart surgeon. And uh, here you see before the tamponade, it was still bleeding. So finally, this is what we got uh, after opening the chest because the surgeon said, well, the bleeding stopped. So therefore he just keep the, uh, the, the thorax open and we did a re angio control the next day and it was okay. So then we closed the, the, the thorax again and the patient came back six months later. And what you can see here is that everything was okay with the cover set. Another important thing is once you have a perforation is the strategy of the ping pong technique. Here's a calcified RCA occlusion, uh, uh, very stiff penetrative wires has to be used and finally retrograde approach was necessary. I could do rotablation here and I could uh, uh, finally do an aggressive post dilatation. And uh, well, at the end, you see here a perforation uh, um, after, uh, after aggressive balloon dilatation. 
So, well, in this scenario, you can just occlude with the balloon. You take the guide out. You uh, change it to an AL1. Uh, you have an extra support wire. I have an, a modern child catheter. And then I deflate the balloon. I go down with my modern child catheter. And then I can inflate the balloon again. And over this modern child catheter, you can easily bring um, a cover stand forward. And uh, while retrieving the modern child catheter, you can place the cover stand. So uh, therefore, there is no continuous bleeding going on. And here's the final result without uh, relevant bleeding and no tamponade, right? So taken together, whenever you have perforation, you uh, might have an integrate device perforation like the rotaper or like also a cross boss or uh, any material in CTO PCI. There you stop the contrast, you do balloon inflation, and then you think about retrograde rescue or a uh, knuckle wire around the perforation, and then you, you have to deal with cover stand. If you have a perforation after stenting, still stop to inject, do a long, long balloon deflation, then you can decide uh, if you go with a ping pong technique or and then you have almost play, uh, place a cover stand if needed. In the collateral perforation, you should also stop to inject contrast. If this occurs during retrograde wiring, a long balloon inflation is almost uh, important, then you can call for retrograde. If the perforation occurs after successful CTO-PCI, you have to coil from antigrade and retrograde, which is important. So during retrieving the microcatheter, then you place your coils uh, uh, while retrieving the microcatheter. So both sides have to be uh, uh, occluded. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for showing us uh, dramatic cases. Uh, so I'm going to uh, introduce the third speaker and uh, uh, Dr. Noru uh, Nakanuma from the new Tokyo Hospital Japan. And he will talk about the action plan, contrast that does not flow after stenting. There was a phenomenon of no reflow. Okay, Dr. Toru. Uh, thank you, DW. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, this uh, session. I'm very glad to join this. Uh, my presentation title is Contrast Does Not Flow After Stenting, but let me add the King as well. It's also a very important situation. Uh, everyone has this kind of case experience. Uh, in this case, after a reverse keyword on LED and diagonal branch, with subsequent kissing balloon inflation, we found no flow phenomenon. It's a nightmare for operators. Uh, we know that uh, atherosclerotic uh, materials from the uh, epicardial vessel wall embolize into the distal microvasculature, microvascular spasm, uh, thrombosis hemorrhage and inflammation are known to be uh, associated with a no flow, a throw flow a phenomenon. Uh, today, uh, I would like to talk about how to bail out for this complication. Uh, we know that this kind of intraconary di dilators, including adenosine, nitroprosid, uh, nicargipine, uh, verapamil are uh, effective to improve uh, coronary flow. Uh, let me introduce our resume about the nitroprosite. Uh, we add one ampoule uh, nitroprosite into 118 ml saline, in total uh, 120 mm, uh, which means and uh, one milliliter includes a 50 microgram nitroprosite. Uh, generally, less than 300 microgram nitroprosite is acceptable, but actually uh, we use uh, more than 500, 600, uh, even 1,000. Uh, this drug activates uh, granulate cyclase in the vascular smooth muscle cell. Uh, leading to intense vessel uh, dilation. Uh, let me show uh, one example with a diffuse heavy calcification on right coronary artery. Uh, this is hemodialysis case. Uh, we performed a relatively uh, small bar rotational arterectomy 
However, however uh, we found a no flow phenomenon after atherectomy, uh, despite using our uh, RA cocktail, including Vera Pamel uh, and Isosolvid. Uh, in this situation, in our center, uh, we, we advance a micro catheter uh, distally. Uh, you can see on the left panel like this. Then uh, inject a nitroprasite, uh, 50 microgram or 100 micro, uh, microgram repeatedly. In this case, uh, fortunately, uh, coronary blood flow increased. Uh, this paper uh, reported that uh, nitroprasite uh, favors uh, regarding flow grade less than two as compared with uh, control groups, including, including aspirin, uh, thrombus aspiration, uh, nitroglycerin, ethylene, uh, etc. Uh, similarly, uh, nitroprasite favors uh, regarding maize as com compared with uh, control groups. Uh, and uh, let me introduce my paper about the rotational atherectomy for AS patient. It's the most challenging situation for operators. Uh, in this paper, uh, reported, we reported 100% uh, uh, procedure success about rotational atherectomy in AS patients. How can we achieve this success? Uh, we reported the effectiveness and the safety of intracoronary uh, nitroprosite, as well as uh, mechanical support, uh, catecholamine use to increase blood pressure, uh, BAV during the same session. Uh, of course, uh, intracoronary imaging, uh, like IBAS or OCT, to reduce uh, contrast. Uh, for AS patient, uh, low bar to artery ratio may be better. Uh, this is the last case I want to show. Uh, this lady was injected and inserted VA ECMO due to cardiopulmonary arrest at another hospital. Uh, severe AS plus left main disease and triple vessel disease were found uh, due to low ejection fraction. Uh, they uh, decided uh, it's not a good candidate for a server plus CBG, so the patient was uh, transferred to our hospital for transcatheter treatment. Uh, we performed aortic uh, vibroplasty first with a 20 millimeter in a room, then started impeller. Then uh, we uh, started uh, PCI for uh, LAD and circumflex. Both vessels were uh, heavily calcified. Uh, we performed a rotational atherectomy for both vessels, uh, supported by nitroprosite and the so called ECPERA. Uh, what we surprised was uh, we found no throw flow phenomenon in this challenging case. So in this case, uh, we used uh, Impera for prophylactic use, but uh, maybe uh, it's effective to use be uh, also for uh, bailout use. As you know, Impera uh, can increase coronary flow uh, by increasing uh, perfusion pressure and decreasing LV volume related intramyocardial resistance. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Toru. So I'm gonna introduce the last speaker and uh, he will be talking about the uh, action plan minimizing contrast induced nephropathy in city of Pisha. I'm Hirokazu Konishi, to Hashi Health Center, Japan. Given my theme is minimizing contrast in this nephropathy in CTO PCR. 
At first, there are several, several definitions for the contrast in this acute kidney injury, AKI. One of the most widely adapted is as follows. An increase in cerium creatinine above 0 0.3 mg per deciliter within 48 hours after the contrast exposure. Or an increase in cerium creatinine above 50% within seven days. Once contrast induced AKI is established, there are no specific treatment, hence the goal is prevention. There are some strategies to decrease the risk of the contrast induced AKI after PCI. For example, radial approach, keeping blood pressure during the PCI, and so on. But the effective golden standard method is these two strategies. Hydration using normal saline before and after PCI. And reducing contrast media. Contrast volume to creatine clearance below two is target value. And below one is ideal to prevent AKI. In this presentation, I forgot the procedural strategies to reduce contrast media. Display previous con coronary angiogram on the catalabo monitor and using biplane angioplasty is a matter of Key point is how we can use the microcasita and IVAS effectively like this. I present session uh, two cases. Case one is 70 years old female, creatinine is 1.7, EGFR is 23. Mid LED was CTO. This is RCA. There are some good collateral arteries from RCA to LAD. We did for LAD CTO. First, saving a contrast media. First shot of angio is started with chip injection using microcasita and red D. After that, the wires advanced within the CTO region. Since CTO region was hard track, the wire was changed from XTA to by a second and third. And finally, conquest through was achieved the distal site. When the wire was achieved the distal site of CTO, chip injection using microcasita retrogradually from RCA reveals the distal site of CTO. In LAO cranial view, the wire is not matched the vessel line. We try to parallel wiring in this situation. But two more angiography is necessary in parallel wire technique. Therefore, we switch the retrograde approach immediately. Discharge is very important to save the contrast media. So 03 was easily advanced to LAD. Like this. Then did chip injection retrogradually. After that, wire was advanced toward the anti-grade wire. Fortunately, in this case, this little wire was passed directly to anti-guide casita. Wire externalization was done and uh, did balloon dilatation like this. Before stent implantation, I was marking was done at the position of stent edge. 
like this, then stent was implanted at the same position for the iris marking, not using contrast media. This is final angiography. Since we use the micro catheter and the IBAS effectively to save the volume of contrast injection, therefore total contrast volume was 28 milliliter. This patient is GFR 23, contrast volume 28 milliliter is no problem. Case two. At years old man, creatinine is 1.6, EGFR is 30. He was underwent the CAD G before. The bypass graft was saphenous vein graft to RCA and saphenous vein graft to LAD. Saphenous vein graft to RCA was patent. This was shown left coronary artery and saphenous vein graft to LAD. LMT has severe stenosis and LAD was CTO. And graft distal side of LAD has severe stenosis, like this. Therefore, we did PCI for LAD CTO. This coronary artery has good calcification. So we can, we can easily to see vessel cause of the CTO like this. So we control the keeping the wire above the calcification line. Unfortunately, the wire was past the CTO region. Wire was closed the septal artery. After that, the lead removed the LRD distal. After that, <laughs> This third point, this third stenting point was marked by IBAS, like case one. Stent was implanted like one. In this patient, stent must be implanted to the LMT ostium to save the contrast media. We use the wire looped around the left cusp. This wire can be marked the LMT ostium position. So we can implant the stent in the LMT ostium without using the contrast media. This is fine angiogram. Since we use the calcification line and the and I was effectively to send the bottom of the contrast injection. Total construct the bottom, but 12 millimeter. This patient's EGFR is 30. Contrast volume 12 millimeter is ideal. Conclusion. Mass contrast EDS AKDA is established. There are no specific treatment, hence, the goal is prevention. Decreasing contrast volume is the single most important strategy. Thank you very much. And uh, this session, and all panelists, uh, expert interventional cardiologists, we expect all audience would be some junior step, junior interventional cardiologists. I think uh, we'll, we'll have a very enough discussion time and uh, we're gonna share your knowledge and tips and tricks uh, and each complex case. So. Uh, we will have a discussion time the for and the Dr. Gang first case. He will show us the uh, very nice demonstration device stroke rotabulation and IVUS. And uh, could you share your uh, tips and tricks uh, from the panelists or any question or comment for the you, you know the rota stroke or imaging stroke? Any any comment for that? Yeah, maybe I can start. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, the nice cases. It's not easy to show uh, complication cases and we learn from it, although sometimes we are shy to make mistakes, you know, uh, but we are human beings. So the first case, uh, well, or at least the first speaker, Dr. Kang and his uh, 
where you get device getting stuck. I think this is fairly common and I think uh, we need to understand before we start a, a procedure, we need to understand what we anticipate as trouble. And you know, always when you, you decide to put in your rotaber in a very old stent, you know you're going to get into trouble. Okay? So, uh, and why, uh, even your Ivers catheter, uh, while the idea of actually pushing in your guiding catheter and then slowly pulling back is innovative, but you have to be very careful because by you pushing your guiding catheter in, which is a good idea, but you can actually dissect your ostium of your left main or even your RCA, and then you're now having to deal with a second complication, okay? So uh, that is important. And uh, the other thing also, when you push in your guiding catheter, if you're using a guiding catheter that has no side hole, uh, you may actually stop flow, all right, into your, uh, where, if it's in the LAD, or you'll stop flow into the RC and the patient may go into some form of arrhythmias. And next thing, you'll be wondering, oh, why did you actually uh, get those arrhythmias? It's because your guiding catheter has no side hole and it's deeply seated and there's no flow. So, so these are just my comments. Thank you. Great, great. So, and the, you, you know, some during the complex procedure, the especially very severe calcified region, sometimes the left main region, and the, we require the rotavulation, as shown in Dr. Gang case. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the anti grade passage is good, but sometimes could be stuck the sucker ostium. How, how can you do? You, do you, to share your experience, how can you resolve the, this situation? Just to accept the strong pullback. Yes. Any any comment for that? And the Dr. Yamamoto and the Dr. Yes. Rin. Yes. Uh, uh, my comment is that uh, uh, in a uh, LMT a, a calcification with a low and unstuck, and uh, sometimes I use pull and uh, gentle pull and back uh, with a. Uh, low speed rot rot uh, rotation. It will make uh, some kind of the uh, uh, car stuck uh, 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 from uh, from uh, pull back from car stuck, and then uh, uh, gently pull on the back, and uh, uh, the the movement uh, will go uh, uh, mm, more uh, uh, distance, and then uh, suddenly uh, you can pull back uh, safely. Uh, it, it's a most uh, easy way, but uh, 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 it depends on the case. And the uh, uh, second chance is that uh, uh, you can use the uh, uh, double guiding, uh, two guiding, and uh, 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 new uh, other guiding catheter. Will, uh, you can use the uh, new balloon or the new uh, guide wire uh, beside the uh, rotavulator. Then uh, you can uh, 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 um, uh, safely uh, uh, push up the uh, uh, the vessel, and then uh, when you uh, just uh, deflation, and then uh, you, uh, the other person uh, pull up, pull back. Then uh, the, you can pull back uh, more safely. Uh, can you understand? Yeah. It's my way. Okay, great. Any any comment? Yeah. More more challenging experience. <laughs> so um, I I really like all three lectures. Uh, perhaps I can start with Dr. Kang's one. I think all of us have trapped or broken devices, so uh -uh. it's less terrifying than massive LS3 perforation, but it's very heart-sinking feeling. So with regards to the start burn and the osteo cert location, so I think I'll go with prevention first. A lot of times uh, when it's very calcified, what happens is that when the burr reaches there, you have a less experienced second operator. Um, there's a lot of tension in the system. So first you have to offset the tension because if not, the burr will just jump. Sometimes it's not very radio opaque, but the wire could have even turned on itself outside the guide and you can shear through the wire. Mm -hmm. So once you offload the tension, you can pack it more gently. It doesn't jump straight in and jam. So uh, I think that's one thing. And sometimes because you cannot see the wire back flip in the calcified segment, you have the CNE it because the rotor blader wire is very uh, not radio opaque. Mm -hmm. But I, I would agree with... Um, uh, Professor Yamamoto to say, do a stepwise approach. I like the approach of if it doesn't pull back, don't pull too hard. That's a very good tip. And go with a second ping pong guide to dilate around it. The next step will be to cut it and do a, a guide extension or a, a guide liner. And then the, you can reel it all the way to the tip before you pull as one option. Um, and also that works better for the shaft and uh, the rotor blader 
dislodgement. This is fractured. I, I favor having the guide extension all the way before you pull back the rotor wire to pinch it in between before you pull out. I think that is safer to prevent further, because sometimes the back tip could be broken at a sharp place. You can, uh, mm -hmm. when you pull out, you can further damage the artery. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's other stents proximal, you can catch it and then you can telescope other stents proximally. So I think those are terrifying uh, 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 end results. So the best tip I learned from Dr. Kang is when you cannot pull, you have to stop because a lot of times the first instinct is to pull harder. And when you catch a stent and it's telescoping back, the moment you don't realize it, you pull harder, oftentimes you need to call in your surgeons because you cannot rescue it. Mm. So I think the best tip I learned is don't pull mm. when you get stuck. Look at it first before you decide to either push or pull. Uh, thanks a lot, DW. Great. Okay, Dr. Gee, can you comment? Oh, yes. So I think the most important thing is that we should uh, check the mechanism of the entrapment, as already mentioned in Dr. Kang. So I think Jack already uh, described all things uh, possible way, but most of things, uh, I think uh, at first, I think we can use a, a second guiding and then wiring pair with a parallel wire. Then at first we should uh, introduce a balloon and and we'll have to, we, we try to list the stuck uh, device at first. Mm -hmm. Then we should, uh, and then if, if it is not possible, then we can check another possible way uh, already mentioned about the, some other mm -hmm. you know, pullback with other extension guiding or mm -hmm. introduce guiding catheter or, or cut the rotation. I think it's, which is a possible way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we're going to move to the second topic and the Dr. Uh, Satoru Ojiji and the, uh, it's about the, regarding population. Dr. Kambis show very, very, you know, the complex, complex population case. You are, you are CTO and the, the master and the, how do you the control the, uh, the population during the CTO intervention or any urgent case? Mm. So the you know the two types of population. One is uh, uh, this uh, cell population, and the other is the uh, uh, main vessel population. If the main vessel population, we we have to block the uh, uh, blood flow firstly to prevent uh, tamponade, and then the think about the uh, second thought. Also, the idea. So, if the population occurs uh, at the main vessel, the one is uh, one put one um, or put, uh, good way is a uh, 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 cover the standard implantation, but uh, the the flank population. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there is a uh, uh, population from the uh, sub intima, if we can go to the true true room. Eh, Maybe just sustaining is uh, enough to prevent the uh, uh, perforation. And uh, second, uh, the distal base perforation, I use uh, usually the embolic coil uh, because uh, we can see the embolic coils by the radiography. So the other place of the thrombin or the other one, but uh, we cannot see the uh, uh, these uh, material. So I prefer the embolic. And what calls for the disabled population. Anyway, the stop breathing the fast to prevent the population, mm -hmm. okay. to prevent the uh, uh, critical uh, mm -hmm. event. I, I would like to share some expert or uh, the interventional expert mm -hmm. as shown in the Canvas case and the left main population. Oh, yeah, the main population is a very uh, <laughs> critical case because uh, that his case is a very big uh, left man. So I think we, we don't have the enough size of the uh, cover stand in our country as your country also. Yeah. So maybe the first, uh, the last one, uh, the big, the one method is uh, uh, cover the left man to the LAD and uh, sacrifice the LCX. Mm -hmm. Then stop breathing fast. Mm -hmm. And the uh, mm, second one is uh, bypass to the sacrum. Mm -hmm. Or the uh, uh, second wire to the LCX. And then 
micro catheter, double main catheter, the push the, uh, uh, cover the stand or uh, uh, membrane, <laughs> and then the cure stenting. <laughs> So, so my, my question to another panel and the, the you know, discussion, the sometimes uh, there is a huge population yeah. and the, we put the graft stand, but yeah. does not control. There is a cardiac tamponade. Yeah. We, we did urgent pericardiosynthesis, yeah. but still bleeding. Yeah. Is it, we call the emergency cardiac surgeon. Mm -hmm. We should wait at least 30 minutes and 40 minutes is mm -hmm. a, how can you control? Is there any any comment or not? your experience and the Dr. Rin and the Dr. Dr. Yamamoto? There was a most extreme case situation. How how can you control? Yeah. Uh, maybe Dr. Tang uh, can speak uh, first, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Okay. Uh, yeah. I I I just uh, really enjoyed the comments. The lecture it was terrifying to see that. So I start with the left main one. So firstly, my surgical colleagues tells me that when they go in to operate on the left main perforation, they cannot access the left main. So if they are bleeding for there, they probably have to blindly stitch around there and then bypass distally. So not easy for them. I do not have a 5-0 covered stand in my lab. That's the main problem. And I thought about this scenario because I'm very afraid it happens to me. I'm thinking that I may balloon tamponade, do a ping pong guide and put two covered stand in a kissing fashion back from LAD to left main and set into left main and post dilate and hope that it seals the perforation as a rescue. Um, uh, and of course, the other option is to fashion my own covered stand 5.0. But the problem with left main is that you will have to sacrifice one of the artery, meaning that likely you have to sacrifice a cert or one of the artery. So I don't have a good solution. I think you have to call in a surgeon very early and uh, you ho I hope it doesn't happen to you. The other few things I like about his lecture was in the bypass. A bypass tamponade may not be huge and it can tamponade. The other way you can tamponade is the occlusion for circumflex perforation to tamponade the coronary sinus and that can cause refractory uh, VF as well. So you have to take note of that category of tamponade. One other tamponade that I'm very afraid of that he didn't quite emphasize is a late tamponade from a small wire perforation that I missed. That if you didn't notice it, you were tamponade in the ICU a few hours after the procedure. So that's also quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, uh, DW. Okay, Dr. Yamamoto and Dr. Yes. Lin, any comment? Uh, I have uh, one case, horrible case of the LMD perforation case, and uh, the LMD is uh, over six millimeters. It's horrible. And uh, we have only the uh, three millimeter uh, graft master uh, stent. And uh, at that moment, I was first using the uh, perfusion balloon, you know, LMD, and then uh, I prepare the, the graft master. It's a uh, I have only one uh, graft master, two, uh, 26 millimeter, uh, millimeter and the diameter is uh, 3 millimeter. And then uh, I push up the, the graft master at first and then uh, uh, putting, putting the, the two guide wire and two balloons uh, inside. And uh, I uh, cr uh, crush up, uh, push up the, uh, the graft master again. And then I uh, put them into the LMT uh, instead of the perfusion balloon and push up. And uh, I uh, surprised that the, uh, this uh, 26 millimeter uh, graft master, uh, when I uh, push up the, uh, into the six millimeter, then uh, uh, the graft master shrink. Uh, uh, the size uh, distance is uh, only 18 uh, millimeter. And so I can uh, safely put it, uh, do not sacrifice LED or six, uh, circumflex. It's amazing. So uh, I think that the graft master is shrink <laughs> when you uh, push up the uh, over six millimeters. Mm. It's my right. case. Okay. Great, excellent. Okay, Dr. Lin, any, any comment for that? Yeah, um, I also agree with uh, Dr. Tan has said that uh, because I also discussed with my surgeon before about how when the left main perforation had happened, they, that's almost impossible for them to do the hemostasis through surgical uh, technique. So I think once happened, the, the hemostasis part, we should uh, we should depend on ourselves because uh, we need to do all the um, method we, that we can expect to do, like uh, put a stent graft or, or, or 
of course, we it's not always have a very short uh, stain graft uh, available in the cath lab. So maybe we need to um, uh, like uh, like ping pong guy that I have the, the Dr. Tan has said oh, all the method we use all oh, surprise one of the vessel. Mm-hmm. And then that our surgeon to do the bypass for one of the main vessels. So I, I think that's a, it's a it's a main. Uh, I think we do, we do need to do start breeding by ourselves, but uh, rescue uh, the the uh, uh, perfusion by uh, by our surgeon. That's my mm-hmm. opinion mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, hey, great, great. Yeah, I got a comment here. Okay. okay. Yeah, because you know, I I think you know I know how to do the competition is important, but know how to pure is also very important. And mm-hmm. uh, I think you should know your vessel, know your lesion, know your calcium before you decide what to do next. And uh, when it comes to that, I think imaging is very important. The IVIS. But just now for the first case, for the CTO perforation, it surprised me you know, because he used a 1.75 millimeter mm-hmm. bird. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether he's based on IVIS or just based on angiogram. I think it's too big. Okay, if he's using a 1.75 bird, you know, uh, he's, he's going to be have to get into trouble. Okay, and then for the second case, the lab make preparation uh, on IFS, we know this is a six millimeter lab make. Mm. And we know it's a calcium nodule. So I don't understand why he used a clinic balloon in the first place. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, I, I don't know anybody here you know, who use a cutting balloon on a six millimeter lab make. Probably not. Mm. So I think we should know how to P1 complication. Okay. And also we need to know how to deal with complications. Okay, great, great. So it's a very nice comment. So we move to the next topic. And uh, Dr. Uh, uh, our friend Toru Nakamura shows the very nice case, uh, you know, no reflow cases. Uh, and in Asa Medical Center, we are uh, usually use the cocktail. It's Berapamil, intracoronary nitroglycerin, and nicorandil. And I learned from Toru and the nitro plus side. So we don't use that, but it's, I'm very... Uh, the you know interesting the use of nitroflucide also <coughs> sorry some catastrophic case uh, is a mid LED proxy there was a severe no reflow after use cocktail and the it doesn't work and the uh, blood pressure is going down we that time so uh, we sometimes use IBP sometimes blood pressure does not restoring we put the ECMO and then just waiting is that uh, how do you control the intractable uh, no reflow case. Okay, so, Dr. So Satoru? How about, mm. about uh, intracoronary epinephrine? Some, ah. reports, some reports show, uh, uh, many reports show uh, in the critical case, mm. intracoronary epinephrine, especially using the, from the microcaster, less than 50 micrograms, mm. is a re- reverse uh, uh, no reflow phenomenon. Mm. There is a uh, 10 or 15 papers you know, uh, until now. So I have one case after Rota and uh, the breast, breast blood pressure is down and uh, any uh, uh, procedure is failed. I finally, I shot the intercoronary epinephrine or recovered. Mm. So it's very surprising. Wow. So I took the uh, many papers so there are many papers and the case report. So if you have the uh, one case, if you have a case, uh, very critical thing, I think uh, <laughs> uh, I recommend the uh, intercoronal epinephrine. Uh, uh. <laughs> I told my colleagues or uh, many my friends. Okay, I, so, I think I think uh, this is a. Uh, this is a very nice time to uh, confess your uh, secret. How can we resolve no reflow? So any, 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 any anyone, other comment? Anyone you you have uh, been use, uh, using the intercoronal epinephrine? Yes, uh, yeah. I, I can add some comment. Okay, about that. okay so basically, when when you see the no reflow happen, uh, it depends on the how the BP it is. If the BP is uh, you know like a less than seventy something, I will use the epinephrine. You dilute it and uh, in, uh, input into the uh, micro catheter. If the BP is okay, and then I, I can use uh, nitroglycerin, adenosine, or, or nitroprusin. Uh, so mm-hmm. it depends on, on the BP, especially when you do the, the CTOK, you do the retrograde uh, for CTO, and then suddenly you see the BP is dropped. And at this point, usually the you need the uh, ep- um, epinephrine. Dilute it and inject, and after that the flow is restored. 
So uh, I, I think that it is very important to uh, to remember about the epinephrine to, mm. to restore the flow because the spasm, when you do the uh, retrograde CTO for a long time, is very strong. And then everything is, is you know, like a, you suddenly you see the BP become zero and the person seems to be okay. You think that the, um, uh, the flash, you need to flash, but after the flash, the BP is still zero. And then at this point, epinephrine is work. The patient is still fine. He, uh, sometimes the patient feels nothing, only the BP down. So I think at this point, uh, epinephrine is, is work. Mm, great, great. So, and how can you control the intractable nori flow, broad facial, still shock, and the etogenic, any, any intracoronary medication, etogenic, how can you control in the next step? Is it, could, could you share your knowledge or the you know expert tips and trip intractable nori flow and the total could you comment on that <laughs> Imp impella or just ECMO yeah, yeah. or just I how can it I am that doesn't work at that situation there. Mm -hmm. So maybe the impella <laughs> or ECMO. <laughs> so and uh, and the waiting <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, I think ECMO at this point is might not be useful because mm -hmm. usually uh, usually the, the no reflow is depend on the on the coronary perfusion and also depend on the LV and pressure. So that's why the, for the ECMO usually you you cannot uh, uh, suck off all the the blood in the LV. So that's mm -hmm. why the, you, you you cannot depend on the ECMO. LV uh, Ibella is okay. So mm. if I uh, if I fail with the uh, the drug, I uh, I go with the Ibella rather than ECMO. I totally yeah. agree that the IAVP is doesn't work. Mm. Yeah. So so okay. I, I okay. have a That's question. Here. So okay. Actually, in Korea, is Ibella is not available. So I have a one experience for the very intractable yeah uh, distal flow yeah obstruction. Uh, in that situation, I applied. Uh, uh, IVP as well as ECMO at mm. the time because and as you already mentioned, ECMO is usually increase the blood pressure, but it's not helpful to yeah to for the for mm. the some uh, myocardial perfusion. So, mm. but IVP is may may be helpful to yeah for the some myocardial mm. perfusion. So mm. I think that two device is is possibly helpful. To some maintained blood flow and this uh, uh, blood coronary uh, perfusion in, mm. in in current situation in Korea. Theoretically, to provide the restore coronary perfusion is impella and IBP, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you uh, that uh, IABP is not perfect, but mm. uh, we can start very shortly mm. to increase uh, uh, blood pressure somehow. Uh, whereas uh, to start in Impera, it takes time, even if uh, you are very mm -hmm. experienced uh, uh, operators. So, well, let me ask you, so in Korea, you don't use uh, Impera, right? You yeah, say? right, right. Still not yet. Not yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, why? Uh, might be some Korean FDA too much strict, uh, you know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, due to the limited time, we're gonna uh, surely uh, discuss the last topic is uh, contrast in this property uh, during the CTO PCI. How can you control, how can you manage uh, contrast in this property in CTO PCI? There was uh, some time happen. Is it, could you comment on one or two moderator and panel comment about that? So sometimes uh, during the PCI and the underlying and renal insufficiency case and the after procedure creatinine is going up the 4.5 uh, is 5.0, how can you control just the weight or some nephrologist uh, uh, advice short term hemodialysis one time, two time would be is a optional optional treatment or some some the nephrologist just hydration and the waiting and something like that is could you could you share your and the tips and trip the how can you control immediate the post PCI you know the renal failure acute renal failure um, maybe I'll just add okay uh, so, so I think when you deal with CTO CTOs you must make sure that it, 
a patient is renally impaired, the CTO has an indication to be open. Mm. Because if you look at the ischemia CKD trial, it shows actually that uh, patients with CKD fare less uh, of than as those without CKD, mm. and which means you're actually doing harm. Mm. So mm. in this case, I'll make sure that you're definitely, the uh, patient is definitely has an indication for the CTO to be open. And usually you'll be able to do a retrograde uh, CTO, which pro, uh, probably consumes less contrast compared to an integrated CTO. Mm -hmm. So that's one option for you. Uh, thirdly, you will have to, of course, look at the patient's injection fraction, make sure that you hydrate the patient uh, uh, beforehand and thereafter also hydrate him thereafter. Actually, there's no right, there's no role, role, uh, wrong on how to hydrate or what medications to use. Uh, it's just that you have to be very cautious when you uh, 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 use your contrast because there's no other uh, way here. And if, let's say, the patient has, uh, uh, he's, he's already towards dialysis and you know that he needs his uh, CTO to be open because he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, not stable hemodynamically, then you probably would have to refer to the, uh, to the nephrologist first, fashion his fistula, and then only after going and do your CTO. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So at, I think time is over. I would like to ask Dr. Satoru Ochichi at the summary of this session and then closing remark. It's Dr. Yeah. Ochichi. Okay, thank you very much for attending this session. But uh, because today's topic is very important during PCI. So the um, one, one is uh, the most important thing is that to uh, uh, stop the uh, complication <laughs> um, before the success. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for uh, showing us uh, uh, very nice cases and a uh, uh, nice lecture. So see you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.